sense, about the concept of the fourth R. You know, we have reading, writing, arithmetic. You know, why not have the fourth R be reflection? That if we can build up this, you know, anterior insula strength, if we can build up reflective skills, which basically no one is doing, we have an opportunity now to shift the compassion in our culture in a very different way. And to boot, we'll probably get better academic performance. Why not? Yes, please. You made a statement at one point where you said the mind uses the brain or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a very peculiar way to speak, that, that perhaps you had spoken loosely. Or no, loosely. very intentionally. So, <laughs> the, I, what I said was, it, uh, what I meant to say, and I think I did say it, the mind uses the brain to create itself. How can you speak <clears throat> about the mind, though, being in that way of speaking, the mind is something different or separate or outside of the brain where clearly in your definition uh, the brain is a key part and in fact no brain, no mind. Maybe. I mean you guys are affecting minds all the time. I have a close friend of mine who's dead. He died last year and you could say on some level his mind is still affecting me because of the way it's influencing my energy and information flow. That's a huge discussion, but let me, let me address the idea of a peculiar way of speaking. I, I do that on purpose because we hear so much from scientists that it's such a common way of believing, and I certainly was raised this way in medical school, to say the brain creates mental activities. It's a one-way arrow. Let me give you an example of a study that was done to illustrate why I'm you know, weird enough or bold enough or whatever to say it and the mind uses the brain to create itself. You um, take someone, let's say, and take 10 people, put them in a, in a uh, house, blindfold them for a week, and the brain had, makes maps of the outside world using the back of the brain, the occipital cortex. After one week, these people have had to figure out the spatial arrangements around them to go to the bathroom, to find food, to find their bed, to go to sleep, etc. After one week, when you put them in a scanner, the fingertips have taken over the back of the brain. Now you could say, well, sure, that's the brain just doing that. But one way of understanding that is this human being... What do you, what do you mean when you said that? The fingertips have taken What I mean is you put them in a scanner and you have them touch things and now the input from the fingers, which is in a relatively small area in the somatosensory strip, massively activates what we used to call the visual cortex. And you can read about this in a book called How the Brain Changes Itself by Norman Doidge, or another book called Train the Mind, Change the Brain by Sharon um, uh, Begley, or another book called The Body Has a Mind of Its Own by Sandra and Matthew Blakesley. These are the summaries of the science, so you know I'm not just making it up. So the idea here is that we used to think of the brain as pretty fixed. Now we're learning it's always changing, and a thought can change the brain. If you, if you need to know the outside world, but your eyes are no longer bringing the input, we used to think, oh, well, you're really in trouble. Your need to have energy and information flow about the outside world drives the brain to create a map of the outside world. It, your mind is using the brain to create what it needs. It needs a mental image of, of three-dimensional space. That's just one example. There's example after example after example in Deutsch's book of how, for example, imagery. Um, you know, studies of imagery with athletes. Uh, they can, if you get an, uh, um, you know, let's say you hurt your leg and you're a basketball player, if you take two weeks and just practice shooting hoops, you're actually going to do almost the same as someone who's been with their legs shooting them. This capacity of the mind to get the brain to be activated and keep those circuits active has now been proven. We didn't know this 10 years ago. It's, so that's why I say, you know, hey, the mind used the brain to create itself. Now, I use this example of this unfortunate woman who's hurt to show, of course, you need the brain circuits to let the mind ride those circuit activations to create itself. And if you don't have those circuits, so for example, I would do a lot of work with traumatized kids. We know the integrative circuits of their brain, unfortunately, are damaged from high stress hormone levels. So those kids have a lot of time developing these middle prefrontal cortex. You can't just say, hey, just do it, man. No, their circuits don't exist. So in a way, the mind is, is using, well, using the brain to create itself. And if the brain circuits aren't there, you're absolutely right. No brain, no mind in, in that sense. Uh, but we need to be really flexible. It's a way of sort of challenging your own mind to say, wow, OK, it's a two-way arrow, two arrows for sure. But why posit something outside of the brain? 
oh, it's crucial, you know, as a therapist, if it was just about the brain, I was just giving pills to people, uh, it would be a travesty. Because, it, because, in fact, people can use the mind to change the brain. We, we now know that. Um, but it's an important issue, this larger question. I'm actually going to three think tanks this summer to look at just that question. So it'll be, you should come, because it'll be a fun dialogue. <laughs> yeah, was there one more? Oh, it looks like we're done. What's that? Oh, one last question. Yes. Yes. Yes, great question. Um, in, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Um, how are these middle prefrontal functions affected by a severe mental illness? The first broad thing just to say is if you look at our diagnostic and statistical manual of illness, what's amazing to see is every disorder, the symptoms of that disorder are examples of rigidity, chaos, or both. So it's, this is a very different way of approaching um, mental illness by looking at impairments to integration. So in schizophrenia, you do see massive impairments to integration. In autism, you see massive impairments to integration. And in bipolar disorder, just to address the ones you've brought up, you see massive impairments to integration. In a book I'm writing now that I'm just finishing called Mindsight, um, every chapter is an example of a, a, a challenging mental health issue. Bipolar is the, actually the first clinical chapter is about someone with bipolar disorder. And certainly, often people need medications, but what I used was a mindfulness technique to try to grow the middle prefrontal fibers. There's work from, and it turned out to work in this one particular person's case. Hilary Bloomberg is a researcher at Yale who's now shown that the fibers from this middle prefrontal area, the ventral ones, ventral lateral, um, are GABA fibers that go down to the amygdala. And she's shown now, that's the first time ever to be shown, that in people with bipolar disorder, they have much fewer um, inhibitory fibers going from the middle prefrontal cortex to the limbic area, to the amygdala in particular. So it's now our first you know, empirical research to support that, in fact, this capacity to integrate, to, to regulate, that's what comes from integration, balancing and coordinating, um, is impaired in bipolar disorder, and we need to have creative ways then of, with mental training or medications, because a lot of these medications actually promote neuroplasticity. The ability of the brain to change in response to experience is actually promoted by lithium, for example, or you know, by certain um, medications like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So it may be that that's one of the major ways those medications are working, by letting the brain grow itself out of its problem. You know. But this is a new way of thinking about it, and we're getting support then to look into these details. So thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to talking with you more. Thank you.